Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. Hope you are well. Thank you very much for coming back again to check out more videos here on the channel. Today, we're going to be doing another... <laughs> we're going to do another batch of loot crates. It's, a, it's, a, it's the ludicrous crates situation now, where I still want to find particular costumes in Marvel Heroes Omega. I'm going to do another 25. I'm hoping for Wiccan. I wouldn't mind getting a couple of the, the Days of Future Past Wolverine or the Old Man Logan Wolverine. Outside of that, I really don't care too much about the wings that I'm actually going to get in these crates. So this is basically because I wanted to talk about microtransactions and games in general while using microtransactions and games <laughs> as an example and a backdrop while I'm talking about them, I suppose. Which is, This is all to tie in with the announcement of microtransactions and the big uproar over microtransactions in games like Shadows of Mordor. Or not Shadows of Mordor, Shadow... Um, Shadows of War. The short of Mordor sequel is Shadows of War. Yeah. It's like hard to even keep track of these games anymore. But uh, yeah, WB have actually made an announcement that they are going to be doing a um, series of microtransactions in the new game that's coming out soon. And I don't think that's going to be a great thing for single player RPGs in general. And part of it is because I'm looking at stuff like this right now where I'm doing these boxes <laughs> you guys have watched me in these other videos i'm like paying for these in the background and i'm trying to actively think about what i want to say rather than going like oh god damn that was another bunch of money that disappeared <laughs> to 20 and 25 right oh i'm i'm gonna be i'm gonna be annoyed about this but i i'll, I'll focus once i get this bit out of the way where the purchasing is done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. <sighs> okay. So I'll get my point across before we even go anywhere near actually opening any of these crits. So with Shadows of War, including a payable microtransactions based around in-game currency, uh, while also still having bundles that can only be bought with uh, buyable gold at the same time I'm seeing a disconnect between a fully paid A-list game and something like Marvel Heroes Omega which is a free to play game with bundles and packages you can buy in the content and I, I'm not comfortable with this idea of putting microtransactions past the point of being in multiplayer and going into single player games there's plenty of examples where this has happened with uh, stupid stuff, like with uh, vestigial ridiculousness, uh, the, the $20 boob enhancement for double, Galgon Double Piece and other games of itself, there's, there's a lot of stupid DLC, and I've grown to accept a lot of DLC's existence that it just happens and people want it, they will buy it. But whenever it becomes uh, fundamentally affecting a game like uh, Shadow of War as a single player, where it's actually going to be bringing in legendary orcs and other creatures that you'd be using as your team to attack, and then having a vestigial side part multiplayer attached onto it, where it's going to be like the forward operating bases of Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, I'm 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 really starting to get upset by the idea that we are accepting and letting these things absolutely happen without any question whatsoever. That it's it's not a way the games are designed. That's a problem with these objects. I had a little rant about it on Twitter and a wee bit of a rant on Facebook about how I felt about these things. And it's actually sound fundamentally about me more than it actually is about anything else. It's actually about gambling in general and presenting gambling as a sport, a game, whenever it is a really out of chance that's completely outside of your hands and costs you money. And in the case of digital game currency, gives you no literal monetary benefit. I, I actually am more accepting of gambling that would make somebody financially better off for the action of gambling in a clever way or by random chance than I actually am by RNG in digital content. The entire idea of a digital casino offends me to a lot of ways because I, the, nobody knows about this, about my upbringing or anything else, but my parents used poker machines and fruit machines in their bars and restaurants whenever, they were, whenever I was growing up. And by proxy of my proximity to those things, I built a, not an addiction, I suppose, but a, a, 
a compulsion to actually play any of these games. And as a small child, that choice of ding music, in fact, <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure to point that out as I actually do this because this is the perfect example to work from. That ding of actually seeing content opened as you go through crates, those little noises, those little kind of like audio cues are unbelievably desirable. It's a, we all know that these things exist whenever we open boxes uh, in games because they are the same noises we hear in casinos whenever somebody pulls a lever on a one-armed bandit. The, this kind of conditioning, even though we know we shouldn't participate in it, triggers off shit inside our head that we don't have full control over. Or we're, the more aware we are of it, the less it will affect us. But a lot of people are blind to that entire information. They're, they don't think about it. They don't want to, want to question in any way, shape, or form. And I don't want to deny them that vestigial pressure that you get from doing the thing, from pressing the button. But in the end up, in a game that's designed around single player content, it's not helpful in any way, shape, or form. So, I, <laughs> Shadows of War is dropped in my priorities of games I want to play, even though Shadows of Mordor was one of the best games of the year it came out, and deserved wholeheartedly the Game of the Year edition that it received. So, I'll come back to this point, but we'll go through the crates as we are, and if anything pops up of interest while I'm doing this, then I'll start talking about it as well, but I'm, I'm holding these back from actually enjoying the crate openings. But please think about it whenever you actually go to look at games that you don't want to reward companies for doing this kind of stuff. You don't want you don't want to reward this mechanic whenever it's absolutely unnecessary. Meanwhile, something like Marvel Heroes Omega, it does financially support a game that has a amount of content, obviously, that should be expanding a lot quicker than it actually is. But it really doesn't. Uh, it, it, it is a free-to-play game. You can go and play it without ever spending a single penny on it. This is the choices that you make. Okay, so we're taking a look outside the first box. 25 Marvel Assassins, 4 Marvel Assassins, a minor experience boost, a credit chest of 10,000 value, and a chest of 50 Marvel Assassins because of a cosmic rarity costume. So first box, a costume, one that we already have. So... There's no real excitement in that, but yeah, that that's actually a pretty decent box. Well, it's 79 Marvel Assassins, so that's a skin, no matter what, flat out. A 79 Marvel Assassins box, so uh, for a one box, you got a skin if you're buying it from Marvel Assassins. And uh, of course, a minor experience boost and a cred chest on top. Cred chest, as always, being worthless. But let's move on to the next one. And wait for that ding. And you hear the ding, and we all get excited about it. So we got four Marvel Assassins, high tech fabric. A credit chest of valueless value, a cosmic fragment, and a random hero ultimate gift. So randomly selected all hero ultimate. So it'll be on an upgrade. It's a box inside a box. We've got boxception on box number two already. So we've got a cosmic fragment, ten of credit chest, high tech fabric, and four marvel lessons. Not an exciting uh, selection, but of course, uh, ultimate tokens useful to have. Uh, if you saw in the previous ones, I got I got stacks of these, and that was actually kind of exciting to see, but in this case, we have no idea who it actually is. It'll work for one another characters. I'm sure I'll I'll fill them up to level 60 at some point myself. Moving on to the next box. So out of the two boxes, we've got Marvelous. We've got a Marvelous Essence enough to buy one full skin and a ultimate token. Well, that, I, I don't know why, but that actually seemed to almost have like a nicer explosion effect to it. Mostly just because we heard Black Cat talking in the background. So 10 Eternity Splinters, 4 Marvelous Essence, High Tech Fabric. Unstable molecules and a matrix of motherfucking unbinding. I don't know how many we've got now. I think we're up to 40, 48, 49. I don't know. We haven't used a single one yet, but I wonder how big the stack can go for these. So, yeah, that wasn't a brain crit, but the Eternity Splinters, four Marvel's Essence, high tech fabrics, and stable molecules. Not even stacks of those, which is disappointing, but eh, what can you do? On to the next box. So just to remind people what we're actually looking for here is we want the Wiccan costume for Scarlet Witch and I want Old Man Logan or uh, Days of Future Past Wolverine. That, that's that's the three we're looking for in this stack. Uh, for Marvel's Essence. A credit chest of absolutely worthless value. A unstable monocle. A chest of 15 Marvel's Essence because we find a heroic rarity costume that we already had. 
So that's the ones that are worth 75, give you 15. A cosmic is what gives you 50. Really? And another matrix of motherfucking unbinding. <sighs> Literally at this point, this book is starting to turn into the fucking Necronomicon for me. Katu Barata, fuck you. Goodbye. Two Eternity Splinters, four Marble Assassins, Ionic Particles, two Experience Boosts, and a Combination Boost. I, I like com I like Experience Boosts, I like Combination Boosts, I like them together, I like them to enjoy each other. Uh, obviously that's not a brilliant crit, but uh, happy to have those boosts to actually have later on. So let's see what else we got in the next one. Ten Legendary Marks, four Marble Assassins, Energized Particles, a Nanotech Filament, and a Matrix of Inbinding! <laughs> I, can't, I can't feel joy whenever these fucking things show up. Ten legendary marks. F another ten legendary marks. Four marble assassins. A puncher spray paint. And an enhanced genome. We are really hitting the dregs of the piles here. Um, well, shit. Not exactly happy about that one. I really don't like getting flourishes either because I still don't know how to exactly use a flourish. I'm assuming they're, ma they're ma meant to be mapped to the up button on your control pad. But I don't think I've ever seen them used. Okay, uh, let's take a look, see what else is in here. <sighs> 10 legendary marks, 4 marvelous essence, high tech fabric, a credit chest of worthless value, and 2 experience boosts. And I, I, again, I like experience boosts, but not an impressive chest. We are already down 5, 6, 7. We already done 8 out of the 25, and we've had 2 costumes, 1 heroic, 1 cosmic, and nothing new yet. So I'm, I'm starting to get to the point where I'm thinking, like, maybe, maybe, just maybe, it might be time to just ignore doing these chests anymore. Because the odds of getting the costumes that I want are too low to actually uh, continue using chests to get them. I need to actually use my Marvelous Essence currency. Five Eternity Splinter, four Marvelous Essence, a lightweight armor plate, unstable molecules by 10, which is a nice stack, and 20 relics of Subterranea. Like getting relics, um, I'm still trying to get to all of my uh, complete relics and legendary setup on my main characters. Good to get those. What does Subterranea do? Health and defense. Good for tanks. Good for tanks, I suppose. I mean, if you're getting toe-to-toe -to -toe tanky, this might be pretty useful for any of the squishier players. So uh, I'm curious to know what one out. What, who would you recommend? Who would you recommend out of the main roster really deserves the relic of Subterranea? Who does it benefit the best? Throw the comments underneath and give me an idea. I'm going into another one here. Two Eternity Splinters. Four Marvel Assassins. Unstable Molecules. A random hero ultimate gift. And a large character experience token for Spider-Man. Um, yeah. Random hero ultimate gift. Nice enough. Um, I've already got Spidey maxed out. Maybe if I, found a, if I had a stack of these large experience tokens for Spider-Man, I might prestige the character and loop it back. But I maxed it out with um, Spider-Gwen whenever the Mar the Spider-Man crates came out uh, fairly early on. I managed to get them in my first batch. I got the character one that I wanted. So, um, yeah, not massive. No, 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 not massive kind of like influx of cool shit coming on here. And Legendary Marks, four Marvelous Essence, a shitty-ass credit chest. A not-so-shitty credit, credit chest. And ten Cosmic Fragments, uh, obviously using crafting other stuff. So not a great, not a great one, not a great one at all. I'm getting a little bit pissed about this. So we've already dropped eleven. This is this is the feeling you would get if you're playing Shadows of War and you're paying for crates. You paid for twenty five of those crates where they're you're not guaranteed legendaries. They end up saying like there's one specifically the mithril ones are going to always have legendaries on it. Um, if you don't, yeah, you're not paying for that. This is what you're going to end up with. Uh, four marvelous assassins. Vulture Wings Flourish, experienced only the one, fuck you. A Matrix of Unfucking Unbinding, and a credit chest worth 100,000 credits. Yay! Uh, not too massively fussed on the credit chest, of course, as always. Experience boost, great. Matrix of Unbinding, fuck off. Already have the Vulture Wings Flourish. Which, by the way, uh, Vulture Wings Flourish, meant to be in the Spider-Man loot crates. Why is it showing up in... The ordinary crates as well. Um, if you're going to have distinct crates for different things, then fucking distinguish them so that we don't have this situation happening where I'm picking them up from the other crates. 
So uh, unless you already chained the RNG and have included these into the main crates and you're planning to get rid of the Spider-Man crates before now, but you still let them linger on, this is a little bit fucked. Not particularly cool with that. Um, anybody else give me a point that they actually have speed spot in these in the main crates as well as the Spider-Man crates? Tell me in the comments below because that's not cool. For Marvelous Essence, Minor Experience Boo. Astral Essence, Matrix of Unbinding. And 10 Cosmic Fragments. That is not a great crit. Uh, main, minor experience boosts, always like it. Boosts are always good. Uh, crafting materials, metrics of motherfucking unbinding. And, uh, yeah. Like, there's literally no one else for me to say about what's in those. Oh, Hulk smack! Or Marvelous Assassins, lightweight armor plate, enhanced genome, two experience boosts, and a shield supply boost. So our first shield supply boost of the 25 crates, whenever we're down to the last... 11. Uh, we've got, what, 2, 4, 5. We've had 5 experience boosts. That's a full stack of experience boosts. And uh, if you threw that in with a combination boost, a car we haven't got any currency boost either. The combination boost is that you'd actually get a full stack plus the extended time afterwards. I've always been curious about the way the boosts work. If I if I have these big stacks of them, is it worthwhile doing a full stack and then making sure to maintain the full stack or let it run down? Uh, the, the, that's, that's the question. Like, is, is there a value in keeping it? And does the how well does the timer stop? Because I've found that it doesn't run while you're inside uh, headquarters, but will run whenever you're actually in unattacked parts of the hub, of the main hub worlds. So is it worthwhile? Or is it just a silliness thing to actually, like, you should be, you should be bur running as fast as you can to burn through as much of the content or much of the leveling as you need to do whenever you have those boosts running because you don't want to waste a single second. And... Back into the loot crits this is number 11, or 11 of 25, or well, yeah, 15 of 25 is supposed to be for doing the countdown. Two Eternity Splinters, four Marvelous Essence, a credit chest for 10,000, a large character experience token for the Blade, and 10 Cosmic Fragments. So, Blade's maxed out as well. <sighs> I, I, I'm sorry, but like, I mean, so most of the characters I actually enjoy playing as, I'm going to max out. And again, getting experience tokens for them is just a slap going like, well, do you know what? You could prestige him. But there's no value in it. There's, I don't feel any value in prestiging. Maybe if you give me a um, a permanent bonus to AP again so that the next one doesn't feel as long, but you increase the amount of XP required. Something stupid like that. Something that actually would benefit my uh, my EXP again. Because if I did that, it would mean I would be able to level my legendaries that little bit faster. Um, maybe that's one of the things they don't want to do, they don't want to grind that out, but if you want to give me stuff like this, encourage me to prestige, then give me a reason to prestige, because at the moment now it has no value. Five legendary marks, ten legendary marks, four marvelous essence, lightweight armor plate, and unstable molecules. Fuck that. Fuck that crit. I'm pissed off at that crit. I'm not happy at that crit. Moving on. Don't care. Five legendary marks, four marvelous essence, lightweight armor plate, two experience boosts, and a chest of five hundred fifty marvelous essence. So we've, so so far we've gotten three costumes. We've gotten one heroic, two cosmics, and nothing that I don't already have. This is really, really getting down to the point where I'm going like, I have to buy the costumes now with the marvelous essence I've gained because the drop rates inside the costume boxes are not good enough. I'm actually I, I'm making enough Marvel's Essence to buy, buy at least one or two of those really elaborate costumes, one of the enhanced costumes. Anyway, so, like, I mean, so much of Marvel's Essence so far. That was 79 in the first one I found, another 15 in the one after that, and then another 50 in this. I've got enough now to buy a 140 costume, so what reason do I have not to buy it? Or the stack of 25, but that would be very frustrating for anybody else who's don't, who happens to have as many costumes as I have over time. You kind of want to, you want it to be, you want the crates to have a chance of giving you the costume than these 50 boxes because even then, a 75 costume is only worth 15. This is guaranteed to be a costume that's worth 100 or 140 that's giving you the 50 and that's frustrating. So yeah, experience boost I'm happy with. Mind of the Marvel Essence I'm happy with and that one, that's an R54. Uh, kind of sucks that that's only 5 legendary marks, but what else can you ask there? It is a randomly generated thing, so we'll see. We're down to what eight boxes now? Two and Ernie Splinters, fifty Marvelous Essence just flat out, which is fair play. Um, four Marvelous Essence, 
So, uh, Cosmic Fragment and 10 Unstable Molecules. It's not often that I see that 50 Marvel's Essence without it being a crate box for a costume. So that's actually, that's a that's a good drop to be found in the box, but a bad drop because I'd rather have the costume. But um, yeah, fair play. Not too bad. Uh, we're down in R7. Four Marvel Assassins, Minor Experience Boost, Enhanced Genome, 10 Cosmic Fragment, and 10 Cosmic Fragment. Or 20 Cosmic Fragments. The friend, uh, sell price 50, what? No, I thought Cosmic Fragments were actually a, a good, yeah, it's used for upgrades. So I thought it was a good material to be receiving, but the price and value kind of encourage you not to sell it, really. But uh, Nor Minor Experience Boost, 4 Marvel's Essence, uh, 20 Cosmic Fragment, not a great box. We're down to 6. 5 Legendary Marks, 4 Marvelous Essence, a Drax Flourish, fuck you, Hit Flourishes, Unstable Molecules by 10, and a Random Hero Ultimate Gift. We don't know who it is, but we'll be opening that shortly after we're finished. 10 Marvelous Essence, 10 Eternity Splinters, 4 Marvelous Essence, Lightweight Armor Plate, and 50 Relics of Asgard. Bing! Yes, I am a big fan of that. Um, I do like the Relics of Asgard. Uh, for 950 health and damage rating to melee powers, many of the characters are hand-to-hand -hand to melee characters. Um, a lot of the powers I use are melee, especially those kind of uh, crash-in moves and uh, like throw out AO stuff. Yes, Relic of Asgard, happy days. Like, like to have another 50 of those. That always works for me. You can give me stacks of 50 of those. It saves me a lot of time farming. Four Marvelous Essence. A shitty as fuck crit crit. Nanotech filament. 10 unstable molecules. And a motherfucking midget of unbinding. Yeah, I know you had to fit one last one in. We only got three crits left. Let's see if there's one in each one of these bastards. I don't fucking want it. I don't need it. I don't need them in any shape or fucking form. I just want them gone. 25 Marvelous Essence. 10 Legendary Marks, 4 Marvelous Essence, a Flourish Star-Lord, and an Experience Boost. Yeah, kind of there, but it deflated in the last second. There wasn't really much else I could do. Another two. 10 Legendary Marks, 4 Marvelous Essence, a shitty has fuck credit crit, a not-so-shitty-has-fuck credit crit, and fuck you! Get the fuck out of my face! Get the fuck out of my face! Do not need any more of you, you fuck! Matrix of Unbinding. Last crit. Last one of 25. Fuck. So in total we've had three costume drops in this 25. Bad drop rates all together for costumes. But we didn't receive a single costume so far. Four Marvelous Essence, Energized Particles, Unstable Molecules, Matrix of Fucking Unbinding! And an Ultimate Power Upgrade, a generic one to be used for any character. Which is a nice item, it's good to have that. But um, yeah, Matrix of Fucking Unbinding. I... Maybe it's just a bad time at night to actually be doing this. But yeah, that was that was a fairly disappointing uh, stack. So, let's see, have we got deliveries of stuff, or do we have enough? Of... We had enough space in our pockets to carry everything for once. Holy shit! That's fucking shocking. Alright, so, yep. We had Random Hero, I... yeah, we'll open that one and find out what it is. It was a Star Lord. That one was a Psylocke. That one was a Spider-Man. And those are experience books and whatever. Take that in my pocket. Take that in my pocket. Put that in my pocket. Now I'm going to be used on anybody. All right. Uh, crafting materials. A first crafting materials. Uh, we got eight matrices of fucking unbinding in that 25. So eight of the crates had one of those in it. Uh, that's mildly depressing. Uh, 54 and stable molecules, blah, blah. Crit chest, four of those, one of those, six of those. <sighs> this, was, this wasn't a good stack at all. I don't know there to look at. Consumables wise, we have a combination boost, three minor experience, one shield supply boost, and ten experience boost. Would make use of those happy enough, but. Not happy. I ain't happy, folks. I ain't happy with that at all. Of course, we had our Relics of Subterranea, and we had our Relics of Asgard. Two there. There'll be another one probably stacked alongside it as well. Oh, that was actually added into it. Um, so, yeah. Not impressed. Not, not great. Let's take a quick look over to um, 
Moon Dragon, because we are going to spend some Marvelous Essence today, and I'm going to buy the ones that I actually really want that I didn't already have. So, uh, we're going to stop chasing. We're going to stop chasing. We're going to wait until these are all reset again for the next time we actually need new costumes. So, uh, of course, me and one I've been looking for, I've wanted to have the Starlet Witch Wiccan one uh, since we started doing these boxes. And, boom. That's the one I was going to buy. I uh, wanted an Old Man Logan. Kind of stuff. I still want to actually win it, win it in a box. But we're going to buy Old Man Logan because, why not? Um, other ones we already have. Any ones that are actually going to grab my attention. I do wanted the Jean, I did want the Jean Grey new X Men one, but I'm not too confer I'm not too fussed on. I'm not not excited about grabbing it, so I'm not going to care about it. Um, anybody else here who I'm actually looking at? Interestingly, no. Most of these I actually have so far. Uh, but ba home coming homemade. I think the hooded variant of that was the last one I needed to get. And I think I got that in the last batch, but I need to double check that to make sure. Uh, fuck guy. The rest of these. Oh, there's Days of Future Pass as well. Uh, <sighs> might as well get those out of the way. <laughs> probably never gonna play Logan. I'm never. Logan's got really badly represented in this game, but. And I'm probably never gonna play as him. But. Um, it's annoying uh, to actually have it still sitting there hanging over my head. Uh, Spider Man, Iron Spider, Enhanced Costume. I really. On there is Enhanced One, but. We'll leave it for the moment. We've still got, we got plenty of cash from that to actually spend. We'll come back, and if there's any costumes I really want that I don't already have, we'll buy them in the future. But that was the three that we were originally searching for. We had enough points for it, so you might as well pick them up and finish them off. So, guys, obviously the in-game currency um, in this game is about of it being not brilliant. Because there is, they already have five. They have your gold, you have your hunters, you have your legendary mark, you have your G's, you have your... Marvelous Essence, you have your Stark Tech. If I can, if I can't count the amount of currencies in your game on one hand, that's a bad sign for your game in general. But um, no matter what, it shouldn't really be more than one. And for as much as this is a multiplayer experience, as much as Marvel Heroes Omega has been a fun game to play in parties and play with my friends, it's it is a single game in a lot of ways. And as much as the flaws in Shadows of War. I've actually been pointed out by so many people online in the last couple of days and so many people's reactions to the game. This is another example where it doesn't feel like it's absolutely necessary, even though this game is completely free to play. It frustrates in this, and it deserves to have these boxes in it for what it is. Is, is there a disconnect in the way I'm possibly explaining this? Can you understand? The, the mentality. This game, for all its flaws, is fun. But still, its in-game currency and purchase of loot crates is frustrating in a lot of ways. And I didn't have... You don't have to pay for this game. But there's a company asking us for a game with four different versions, if I'm not mistaken. Ranging from $50 to over $100. And then asking for microtransactions on top of that. Do, is this a line in the sand that we want to, what do we want, that we want to have ignored and people just step right over? And is this a point of actually somebody turning around saying, do a boycott? Do, don't buy the game? I'm still really interested in playing the game. I still really want to play the game. But I really want to make it known that the microtransactions are not welcome. They weren't welcome in uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And it put me off playing that game. Even though I really enjoy the Deus Ex franchise. Is, uh, am, I, am I going to start disliking games and walking away from games that may have some very fun mechanics and a world that I want to explore and have characters that I might find interesting and a, a quirk and a mechanic and a system that is unique to itself simply because it's greedy. Dude, avarice and greed are things that can actually really put you off of a really enjoyable experience. Like, uh, you, go to, you go to a bar and you're hanging out with your friends and people are buying rounds and there's one guy who won't buy a single round or you're going to a 
pool hall and you're playing pool and there's somebody who won't chip in for the next hour on the table or, or I think there's little moments like that that can color your entire experience and I don't want that to be in my games the the escapist experiences I, I mean I don't want a video game to constantly remind me that I could be spending money I could be spending real money on this game or something the, the, all these little things that try to drag a reality back into your own reality to, to your escapist experiences to your uh your your departure from the daily grind do we want that in our games and if we don't want them in our games what can we do to stop it because i honestly think it's just a matter of not participating in those plays the to to visually and monetarily disinf disincentivize companies from continuing on in those pro pro processes does that like, I, I i personally think that might be just a point of just checking any wb game before it comes out and going like right are you doing this yes you are doing this and it looks like i'm not buying it i'll rent it i'll borrow it from somebody else and neither of us are going to spend money on it but try and reduce the amount of money that they have and make sure it's abundantly clear that's why you didn't buy it so guys uh Sorry for the preachy, preachy rant along with the loot crate opening. I suppose I, I thought the juxtaposition would be appropriate here on uh, Passage of Skin. Um, if you agree with any of the comments I've said or you disagree with them in any way, shape, or form, uh, make sure to say underneath, uh, dislike the video, upvote the video, share the video, pass the thought around. And if you feel like it, hit the subscribe button. It's floating up there. If you don't do the subscribe thing, completely understand. Not, everybody in, not everybody's into that. But just make sure to check out this. Memorize the name, Passage of Skin. All you have to do is search for it, throw it into Google, and you can easily find me. I am not trying to hide in any way, shape, or form. You can easily uh, find me on the interwebs in some way, shape, or form. And we can continue this discussion ad infinitum if you desire so. And if you're watching this on YouTube, there we go. There'll be a subscribe button up there. Over here will be a recent playlist. Over there will be the most recent video on the channel. And right here will be a video for you based on YouTube analytics and all the things that you do on YouTube. Could very well be in another Marvel Heroes Omega video. I don't know, but whatever it is, and I make it, it's right there for you. So you should click on that one, check it out, and enjoy it. And I hope to see you dudes in the next controversy. <laughs> Bye.